uh, okay, I, I guess this is a part personal, part public speaking question. It's how to do well in your speaking career. <laughs> how oh, to okay. do well in your speaking career. So this one is quite a short question. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you for the question because uh, the, the public speaking related questions that we do get at times, sometimes they are like skill-based questions. Sometimes they are more towards the business, speaking as a profession kind of question. So I think this, this question hits there and uh, it depends on, 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 the, on the trainer, it depends on the coaches, it depends on the speakers that you speak with. So yeah, I agree with Zubro that it's, it's definitely a part personal and a part mm. public speaking question. Uh, okay, so I'll, I'll take this question first. Mm. Uh, sorry, sorry, bro, the, the question again is... Ah, so how, let me switch the screen. <laughs> I, I just, just see if I got it correct. How to do well in your speaking career. Okay, okay. cool. <laughs> how to do well in your speaking career. Wow. Uh, <laughs> over the years, I realized that and this is one thing that some of my some of my friends would also ask me. They say that hey, if let's say you win a lot of uh, debate competitions, or you win let's say a public speaking contest, or maybe the world championship of public speaking, or maybe any other speech contest, uh, once you get an award, does it automatically help you bring in say a lot of sales, a lot of clients who are going to engage your services at all? Uh, so over the years, I then realized and also had a chat with some of my friends uh, who, who themselves are now professional speakers after go going through the competition route, whether as, as you know, national debaters or whether as uh, public speaking uh, competitors, they, they always share the same answer, which is that it does not automatically lead to more sales. Because the truth is not many people might have heard number one of the competition itself or the competitions if you have attended a, a few or participated in a few. Uh, number two, being a good competitor, being a good competitive speaker might not necessarily translate into a quality coach. Uh, so you could be like, for instance, a top tennis player, but to be a top tennis coach, you require an additional set of skills. Uh, the third one is even after you've acquired fantastic speaking skills, one, two, you've acquired fantastic coaching skills, two, uh, the third one is if no one has heard of your services, uh, then it's going to be very difficult for you to effectively make a living out of it. So making a living out of it is, is certainly not easy. Uh, Zoo and I, we are now in the business of, of, of speaking. We are now in the business of uh, speaking for, for a living. And indeed, it's going to be a bit more challenging to, 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 to look at the COVID-19 situation and uh, see how things are going to pan out because it's anybody's guess. But what we are doing is we are holding firm to, to our quality of training. So I would say how to do well in speaking career. Let me just share very quickly three things based on the uh, backdrop that I've given. Uh, the first one is the marketing. But when I say the first one, it's not the most important one. Yeah? The most important one, I save it for the last. The most important one <laughs> is fulfillment. <laughs> the fulfillment is key because if your marketing is solid, solid, and uh, if you have, if your marketing is solid and you have uh, no, no, no quality or no substance or the content is terrible, then it's basically a hit and run. People engage you once and after that they leave. Uh, but of course you need the marketing because otherwise no one would have uh, heard of services. So number one is have uh, strong marketing. Uh, strong marketing in terms of marketing the results that you create for your clients, uh, not just how good you are. Because increasingly, I think the marketing slant is that people want to know the results that you can create. The more vivid you can portray, yeah, the, the more cases you can show and prove, uh, the stronger the social proof, the stronger the uh, desire and uh, your standing in, in their minds and their hearts. So that's one, the marketing. The next is the sales. So marketing and sales, they're a little different. Marketing is to create a lot of awareness. Marketing is one to put your services out there. Sales is the one that tips and converts your, your, your individuals. Uh, what we say is that not all people are at the buying stage. In fact, if you look at it, it's the tip of the iceberg. The, the majority of the individuals could either be still browsing or they're not even aware of the problem. So, so marketing is one thing that helps to do that. Sales is the one that helps to convert. Yeah. And the final one is fulfillment. Fulfillment is really, really crucial because if you don't fulfill, it's going to be a hit and run. Fulfillment comes in the, in the way of the quality of training, the results you produce, and also the overall learning experience, the user experience, the customer service over there. So this is something that we take pride in uh, and uh, something that uh, our team over at the Public Speaking Academy, uh, we, have, we are very thankful, we are very grateful for the good reviews from our clients. And these are things that we don't take for granted because we know that it's a ever learning journey and we are always looking to improve our craft. In fact, just the last year's kids training syllabus, 
uh, uh, Zul and I, we are working towards, you know, increasing uh, the, 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 the updates, making changes, amendments to the content. <laughs> I think done on a week on week basis. So we are, we, are, we are not exaggerating when we are saying that improving and updating our materials on a month on month, week on week basis is a very true and a very real thing. <laughs> feedback from our clients seriously, good or bad, we take feedback and then we evaluate, we assess along the way. Um, to be honest, if you ask me, I, I myself, I really don't know the answer to, let's say, quite a number of things. I would say even a lot of things now with COVID-19. So it's largely pulling together our, our talents here uh, at Public Space Academy and then together we work out the solutions. So, so that's my take on that. If you want to do well in a public speaking career, it's going to be hard work on three fronts. <laughs> it's not just on one, because as a career, it's very difficult. Good rep. Yeah, yeah, awesome. I definitely agree as well. And I think uh, as someone who also just recently moved from, I mean, not so much a pure speaking career back then. Uh, I was doing legal arguments, but that, that was not really a speaking per se. Uh, so as someone who recently moved over from there, uh, one of the things that struck out to me was, especially after joining uh, PSA as well, uh, was how much work that goes into not just the speaking element or the training materials, but the business creation part, so the business development part. Uh, these are things that I'm learning from uh, from Darren, uh, from Derek as well. Uh, learning all the different aspects of how to manage clients, how to uh, build up your marketing plan, how, all these different factors. I think uh, are a lot of your different ingredients in your recipe for success. Uh, some of the things that me, uh, some of my maybe friends have uh, thought before is that oh, uh, for a public speaking training career all you need to do is just speak well uh, and then the the like the bro like i said the, the, the fun the money will come in right clients will come in people will hear you but if you don't have that business set up uh, well done then you, you're not, you're not going to be able to go quite far i mean you can still probably succeed in some way but uh, you're not going to get maybe to the end goal that you wanted to that big goal that you are aiming for as well so that was one thing that really struck out for me uh for me another aspect was also the uh, understanding that if it's a speaking career then you are the main asset in the sense that your voice, your technique, your R&D, uh, whatever techniques that you know, all this, it needs to be constantly updated. That's something that I, I sort of, I'm not saying that I'm doing well now, <laughs> but more of a, uh, something that I remind myself when I first joined uh, PSA and now coming to one year was that when I first joined, I told myself that I, I never want to at any point come into a class, uh, any class, kids, adult class, and feel like, oh, I'm so tired, I'm just going to go through the motion today. Uh, and all, I always want to make sure I go into a class and think, what, what value can I give to everyone today? And I think that's something that's very important because uh, your students, your clients, corporate clients, they all can see that you're giving sincere value. And the moment they don't see that, uh, then your career might get, I mean, that, that would be a barrier uh, towards your career path. So uh, focusing on what kind of value you can give, and this may tie specifically to uh, what your own skill sets are, how you are speaking, what kind of research you need to do into your materials, and uh, how do you then fulfill your clients or your students' learning objectives as well. I think knowing that you are the main asset, you are the one mainly responsible for the aspect in a classroom setting, uh, that is something that can help to drive you forward as well. But at least, I, I think for me, that, that definitely something that drives me for each, every class that I go to uh, currently. Yeah, it's been mm -hmm. like a year, almost a year. <laughs> yeah, correct, correct. Yeah, yeah. 